AE reference table C gives you three pieces of information. It tells you the delta H, it tells you the delta G, and it tells you the temperature at which the delta G is that value. What does this not give you? Delta S. What if we want to find out if a reaction is spontaneous at a temperature other than 298 Kelvin? Well, because delta G depends on the temperature, what we need to do is find the last piece of the puzzle given the information here. And that's to find the delta S. We know the delta H, we know the temperature, we know the delta G, we need to find delta S if it's not given to us. And here's how it's done. Let's rearrange this equation to solve for T delta. Let's rearrange this equation to solve for delta S. The first thing we need to do is to get T delta S apart from delta G and delta H. But you see that negative sign? That makes it difficult. So what we're going to do is we're going to add T delta S to both sides. And we're going to get delta H equals delta G plus T delta S. Again, I added T delta S to both sides to get rid of that minus sign. Then I'm going to subtract delta G from both sides to leave del T delta S. So delta H minus delta G equals T delta S. The final step is to get delta S by itself. To do that, we divide both sides by temperature. And that gets rid of temperature and leaves us with delta S. And the reason this works is this. Both delta H and delta G are measured in kilojoules. Temperature is measured in Kelvin. And the units for delta S are kilojoules per Kelvin. And that's exactly what this is going to give us. Delta H minus delta G divided by temperature. So, calculate the delta S for the formation of iodine chloride. Delta S equals delta H minus delta G. And it's easy to remember because it's in the same order that it is on this reference table. Delta H minus delta G over temperature. So let's plug those numbers in for iodine chloride. Now let's see. Iodine chloride has a delta H of positive 18. And I'm going to subtract the delta G of iodine chloride, which is negative 5. And divide it by the temperature that this delta G is listed for, 298 Kelvin. And then solve. So positive 18 minus a negative 5, that's the same thing as adding 5. 18 plus 5 is positive 23 divided by 298. And what does that come out to? 0 0.077, 2 sig figs, 3 sig figs, 2 sig figs, kilojoules per Kelvin. More importantly, it's positive 0 0.077 kilojoules per Kelvin. So what does that mean again? If entropy is favored, but enthalpy, delta H, is unfavored, because it's positive, that means that this reaction will sometimes be spontaneous. And that's how you find the delta S. And you can use that delta S to solve other problems. Okay, so we said that a reaction can either be always spontaneous, if both factors are favored, or always non-spontaneous if both factors are unfavored, or sometimes spontaneous if one factor is favored and the other factor is unfavored. If it's sometimes spontaneous, there will be a temperature at which it goes from being spontaneous to non-spontaneous. And at that temperature, it reaches what's called equilibrium. Equilibrium is what happens when the rate of a forward change equals the rate of a reverse change. But in order for there to be both a forward and reverse change, then a reaction has to be spontaneous in both directions. Imagine, if you will, a river. A river that's like this, the water can only flow one direction, like that. A river like this, well, the water can only flow in one direction, like that. But what if the river has completely no slope at all? Then the water is free to go in either direction. That's what we're looking for. When delta G equals zero, we have equilibrium. 
So, at equilibrium, delta G equals zero. To find out what temperature reaches equilibrium, again, if delta G equals zero, we can make this zero equals delta H minus T delta S. Because at equilibrium, delta G will be zero. And if we want to find the equilibrium temperature, well, delta G is going to have to be in equilibrium delta G. So let's rearrange this. First, let's add T delta S to both sides to get rid of that minus sign. So, T delta S equals delta H. Now, to find the temperature, divide both sides by delta S. Delta S will cancel and leave you with delta H over delta S. And this makes sense because delta H is measured in kilojoules. Delta S is measured in kilojoules per Kelvin. So, kilojoules will cancel and leave you with Kelvin, which is what we're trying to find out in temperature. So temperature is delta H divided by delta S. So determine the equilibrium temperature for the formation of iodine chloride. That's the one we just found the delta S for. Using the delta S, we calculated on the last page. So the equilibrium temperature equals the delta H divided by the delta S. Now delta H for iodine chloride is positive 18. Yeah, we already knew that positive 18 kilojoules divided by, well, what did we calculate delta S to be? Positive 0 0.077, positive 0 0.077. So that kilojoules cancel out. When we divide these two numbers, we get a temperature of positive 230 two sig figs, two sig figs, two sig figs, Kelvin. Since delta H is unfavored and delta S is favored, this reaction will be spontaneous at any temperature from 230 degrees on up. Below 230 degrees, this reaction will not be spontaneous because the delta S factor will be too small. This is the temperature at which this reaction right here reaches equilibrium. And that's all you have to do. First find the delta S and then you can find the equilibrium temperature.